Hey, Celebrate Recovery family. It is good to see you. Instead of looking at me, I'm just going to show you some familiar places. You'll recognize those are the doors that you come out on Wednesday night after the service. And Pastor Matt and everyone has encouraged you, go to small groups, go to small groups. Here's the door. I call it the ding-dong door because it has that little loving alarm on it. This is the hallway you walk down, and if you're a newcomer, you stand here, and then you, and you look this way, and you look back, and usually there's someone here with a name tag that says, can I help you find the room you're looking for? And you walk down these hallways. This is at First John Methodist Church in Maryville, and these rooms are used, um, the rooms behind me are used for our uh, preschool. But you come and you see that this is also a Sunday school room called Challengers, but it's also a recovery group. And these chairs are pulled in a circle, and folks share and are honest. Confidentiality is kept. There's another room, sometimes used as a music room for our preschool, sometimes a Sunday school room. But we share a lot with Celebrate Recovery. And here's another recovery group. You recognize these rooms if you've been before, and maybe you're missing these rooms. We miss you, and thankfully, as we gather on Wednesday night here online, and if you miss it on Wednesday, you can go to Facebook or the uh, CR website, which is crmarivilletn.com, and you can watch more of the worship services and also get information about recovery online, about how to get support. You can call the church office, 982-1273. Here's another one of our Sunday school rooms, um, also a recovery room. And I'll tell you a secret. A long, long time ago, this used to be called the bride's room. You know why? <laughs> because there's a full-length mirror, and this is where the bride would get dressed. Um, now you know a little secret about the church. It's not a secret, just a little known fact. Um, but we, we miss being together. We miss sitting in these chairs. We miss uh, sharing with folks who understand what it means to have hurts, habits, and hang-ups. So I just want to say, even though these chairs are empty, we see each other. And we are glad that you are here, and I'm thankful for this way that we can um, stay together. Let's spend some time in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we do thank you for gifts of Internet, for gifts of uh, Facebook and websites that keep us together. But most of all, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that connects us. It is the tie that binds. And I pray for folks who especially are feeling lonely, uh, desperate right now. God, just give them a sense of serenity, a sense of calm to make a good decision to reach out for help, to know that they are not alone, that your presence is with them but you have created us in such a way that uh, incarnation, being in the body, seeing other people, being in community is so important. And so God, um, open our eyes and our hearts and our minds that we might seek out ways to reach out over the internet and over the telephone uh, to message to say, I need help, or I'm here if you need help. Thank you, God, for your gracious presence. We pray for all of those folks who are working so hard to, to keep us together. And now as we prepare to sing together, to uh, say the 12 steps together, to hear a good word that we will feel, again, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that things are going to be okay because you are with us, your grace supports us, and we are here for one another. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Step one, we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives had become unmanageable. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Step three, we made the decision to give our will and our lives over to the care of God. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step number five, admit to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven, we humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. Step eight, we made a list of all people we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. We made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. We continue to take personal inventory, and when we're wrong, we promptly admit it. Step 11. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry it out. Step 12. Having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. Bury me in your blood Let it become all I am Born as a new creation I'm alive in your Holy Spirit Bound in the light
This life is more Hey friends, it's me Matt again. Just wanted to take some time to share with you a few things that have been on my mind recently. Um, I don't know if you're like me at this point. I'm having a hard time keeping up with what day of the week it is, what time it is. What am I supposed to be doing this day? Why do I have this coffee in the way? All these things. It's um, drinking coffee, uh, you know, I don't know if it's nine o'clock or six o'clock, but I guess that's pretty typical for me, if I've got to talk around people, I'm probably drinking coffee. It's a weird thing. Um, but so uh, I've been talking to a lot of friends about just looking for rhythm, looking for a way to just stay in sync. Um, and you know, uh, something I, uh, I've done off and on for a pretty good bit of my adulthood, um, I guess I'm an adult now, is journaling. Um, you know, I've got this journal here. I take it with me every time I travel. It goes with me. Um, if I leave town for the night, it goes with me. Uh, it goes with me from the living room where I spend my evenings and live to the bedroom where I go and sleep. And, um, you know, it's been very helpful for me here lately because it's uh it's something that allows me to keep track of the day right now i have um you know so today is this uh today is friday april 17th um day 26 of quarantine for me um some of you have probably been in it much longer um and uh you know, I have it written here. It's day 26. It's Friday. That's a good way for me to keep up with what day of the week it is. Um, not only is it a helpful tool, this is something I've been doing. Um, I did fall into the trap. At, there's a big gap in my journaling history because I journaled every day while I was on my hike because I had something new and exciting that I wanted to remember. I had something new and refreshing every day, something wonderful that just made me wake up and say, this is a wonderful life. This is a gift. And then I got back from the trail, November 19th, had big plans to start training for a marathon, went on my second run, had an upset stomach, um, that hung around a little bit longer than normal, found out that I had a hernia, had to get that, uh, had to get that fixed. And um, so that kind of grounded me and then made me a homebody much more than I was used to. I went from hiking eight, 10 hours a day to um, watching Pokemon on Netflix or something like that and Trailer Park Boys and, you know, rubbish TV um, and laying around because I couldn't move and it hurt to sit up. But, um, you know, then I got into this little funk and this little depression and I was like, well, what's the point in journaling? What's the point in remembering what I'm doing these days? What's the point in caring? I do nothing that's of noteworthiness. Um, I do nothing I want people to remember. I do nothing I want to remember. And so I quit journaling for a while. I just thought my life wasn't worth remembering. There wasn't you know, these, we always post our biggest highlights on Instagram. You know, there was nothing worth posting to Facebook. There was nothing beautiful I was seeing. And um, so I called my sponsor up and I talked to him and he said, why don't you try going to 90 meetings in 90 days? And there I was, almost five years clean. That's for the newcomer. I don't need that. How dare you? Why would I do that? Well, I was going through something. I was a little bit depressed. I just had a major life event happen. And um, <clears throat> I was looking for outside stimulus to um, make me enjoy myself. And uh, 
So I took his advice after complaining about it. And it was one of the best things I ever did. Now, unfortunately, I didn't pick up my journaling again until the fall of this year when my therapist recommended it. She said, you know, you got a lot going on up there. Why don't you try to get a little bit of it out? Uh, why don't you try to get it out of your head, put it on paper, make it something physical instead of just this gobbledygook that is the way your mind turns. And um, so I started back journaling again. And I was like, and I thought the same thing. Well, I've got nothing great to write about. Like, my life's pretty boring. Like, here in a few minutes, I'm going to walk out the back porch and I'm going to watch men build a house. Uh, actually, that's going to be fun for me. But, um, you know, and uh, if you're in the same boat as me and you feel like life's a little bit boring now, there's not all these wonderful things going on that we're used to. It's not all these big gatherings that we're used to. It's not all this fellowship in the physical sense that we're used to. Maybe you're just feeling a little bit down. But I um, was talking with a friend a few weeks ago while I was on vacation um, about my journaling habits because every night before I went to bed, I would um, have my slippers on and pretend I was smoking a um, tobacco pipe to look uh, astute, um, just pretending. Uh, but I would sit there and I'd write down what was going on. And I said, well, I never actually go back and read these things. Um, it just helps me get the slate clean, get the board clean in the morning. It's like the things that bother me are gone and the victories of today are right here. Um, <clears throat> well, I've kind of uh, went back on that idea. I've been going through uh, the past few days and reading some of the little things that have been going on in my life that are blessings, that are wonderful, that are things I need to remember. The fact that, you know, someone took the time to call me because it looked like I was having a bad day over a meeting. Or the fact that people are reaching out to me continuously. Or that I got a lot of mail this week. I love getting the mail. Um, you know, uh, th those things are small but significant. And the truth of the matter is, I'm prone to forget these things. But journaling helps me be reminded um, I was talking to someone earlier this week, said I knew everything I needed to know about recovery after 90 and 90 meetings. I knew that I was the problem. It wasn't anyone else. It wasn't the drugs. It wasn't the alcohol. I knew the problem was me. I knew that acceptance was the answer to all of my problems. If I could accept the fact that if there is a problem, then I could start doing something about it. I knew that there is solutions in the steps and that there's a spiritual awakening as a result of those steps. I knew all these things. I just hadn't had enough time to actually practice those things. Now that I've practiced some of those things, now that I'm experiencing some of these spiritual ideas in my life, now that I've got some material things in my life, I need to be reminded that Whenever I get frustrated, I just need to accept it. Sometimes I need to just say, that's on me. That's my bad. Um, and then move on with it. I don't have to beat myself up over my small mistakes. And I am I have a tendency right now, you know, to beat myself up over stuff because I'm not as I, I don't feel as productive as normal. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is I need to be reminded of the simple things. I need to be reminded that people care enough about me to call and check in on me. I need to be reminded that I'm not alone. I need to be reminded that it's okay to admit this is a hard time. It's okay to not have it all together. Um, I need to be reminded. Uh, I made the joke this week that... Um, I didn't like the I didn't like my point of view on some things, so I took my contacts out and put my glasses on. I'm in a better mood.
And you know, this whole idea of being reminded of things, this whole idea of journaling, it's not just some new thing that psychologists are recommending. My friend Bob Hayes, he's a retired Methodist minister. I'm envious of him for a lot of things. One of the things is, is he has a detailed journal of every day of his life over 60 plus years since he, be, since he became a minister, since he joined ministry, since he was in college. He has a journal for every day. And that's amazing to me. I, what does 60 years of life on paper look like? I bet it looks like a lot of miracles. I bet it looks like a lot of struggles and a lot of questions. But I bet in those pages, there are a lot of reminders of the fact that others love me, that God loves me, and that I love me some days. I was reading in Psalms 119 this morning, verse 27. Psalms 19 is pretty famous for being really long with lots of words. It says, Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. For me, I forget a lot of the wonderful things God does in my life. So I need to be reminded. I need to meditate on those things. I need, the truth of the matter is, I don't need new information to be a better Christian. I don't need new information for me to unlock the next level of recovery, whatever that might be. I don't need these things. I just need to be reminded of the basics. Just need to be reminded of the Great Commission to go love others. I need to be reminded to love myself sometimes. Another psalm that came to mind this morning is Psalm 102, verse 18. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that the people yet created may praise the Lord. Like, so that the people yet created may praise the Lord. Record these things. Remember these things. You know, one of the beauties of the Christian faith, one of the beauties of the Bible is that it started as an oral tradition. It started as stories that we told each other to remind ourselves of God's love for us. And now we have the Bible, which allows us to share the story around the world. But that doesn't take away the importance of sharing God's love with our words. Sharing God's love with our acts. Sharing God's love any way that's possible. So today, I hope this has been a reminder that you're loved, that we love you here at Celebrate Recovery at Maryville. I hope this has been a reminder that we are still going to be here in new and different ways. If you, need, if you need help like me keeping track of the day, like I said, I write it down. It's Friday. What will I do on Friday? I got a polo shirt on, so I got a pretty good guess of what I'm going to go do. Um, I need some exercise. Uh, so, uh, I've got to be reminded that a little bit of work with my hands is a good thing. As Bob Dylan says, Dirty hands make for a clean soul. So I don't know what kind of work you need to be doing right now. I don't know what kind of work would be beneficial to your spirit right now. But there is some work that each and every one of us can be doing. There is work that we are able to do if we just reflect back on ourselves, reflect back on our lives, reflect back on our journeys that led us to this point. We will see small reminders everywhere of God's faithfulness and love and the fact that people have been with us throughout the entire journey.
Thank y'all for being a part of my journey. Uh, this is always a week I reflect a lot. And um, I'm just grateful to have each and every one of you in my life. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Join me in this prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen.